Hello, I'm Andrew Elysium, and this is World War K, episode 26. So those tanks have been very annoying, and we've realised that we basically cannot take them down, because what's happening is they're so amazing and large that they're causing time to distort where they are and anything will pass through them, i.e. the frame rate drops so low that anything is basically passing through them before being detected as a collision. So, we're going to have to get down on the ground and do it the old-fashioned way. So we need to send in a special operative. He's, of course, on board the uh, space station in orbit. So, we're sending up a drop pod, a newly designed and special drop pod, to collect him. Uh, I've accidentally designed this rocket with way too much Delta V. I don't know why. I was somehow thinking that I'd send it up to a much further space station. So, we've got plenty of Delta V on here. And we're going to get the drop pod. We're going to get Jeb into it. And then, he's going to land and he's going to take care of those evil... Nat... People. Need to come up with a better name. Anyway. So, this is sort of a special operative special forces mission, but, you know, it's only Jeb. So, I decided, you know, we'll talk about the origin of special forces. Now, special forces have been around for a while. We're talk sort of talking the 19th century, or maybe even earlier if you want to talk about sort of elite forces doing specific tasks like flanking or ambush maneuvers. But if we're talking about special forces, which are sort of um, generally we're talking smaller and we're talking intelligence missions as opposed to tactical or strat strategic missions. We're talking individual things like destroying facilities or whatever. So, there's a, there's a very blurry distinction there. So, if we're going to actually talk about it in the modern sense of Special Forces, uh, you could go back fairly far, but I'd say the Second World War is really the dividing point where you go, ah, ah, this is, this is, uh, yeah, right. So, probably the first recognisable unit of Special Forces was the British Commandos in the Second World War, which were formed in 1940. Um, they like basically were meant to be doing tasks, and they've got some very famous operations, such as the raid on Sinazir, which is a I think it's called Operation Chariot, where they basically there was this um this harbour that could house certainly certain types of battleships, large battleships, and it's the only harbour that there was on the entire uh, Atlantic coast, so in France. And the idea was, that if it got destroyed, it would definitely limit where Germany's navy could be based. And so it needs to be destroyed. It could be destroyed from the air. So how do they destroy it? They'd sail up a channel. They'd sail up a channel past many flat guns. And basically, it's rather insane how they did it. I won't go into the exact details because uh, if you really want to learn about it, it's an amazing documentary of Jeremy Clarkson. They basically, they sailed up the channel, blew up the dock, and uh, did everything right. And then very few of them got out. A lot of them got captured. A couple made it out and a couple made it down to uh, Spain. Uh, this, there's a rather amusing anecdote about how uh, the um, commanding officer who got captured of the special forces being interrogated, he said, oh, you failed, you don't know that ramming your ship into the dock would do nothing, you have to be idiots or something. And then as he said, like, as he finished that uh, sentence, the explosives that they planted in the ship that they rammed into the dock blew up. So, that was rather amusing, I would imagine. Um, they're also involved in some less successful missions, like, uh, I think it's Aqua Operation Aquitaine? Something like that, where they basically they they got ambushed, and then they ran back to their ship, and their ship got damaged and had to leave without them. Um, there were some mediocre missions where they had to destroy some hydroelectric facilities, etc. So that there was a mixed uh, bag when it comes to special forces, but um, they definitely proved a lot more bang for the buck than you know normal infantry in those days. Now, one that often gets attributed to uh, British Special Forces, which actually uh, I will just wholeheartedly say here is actually thanks to the Norwegians, is the destruction of the uh, hydroelectric facility, or at least the disabling of it, in uh, Norway that was captured by the Germans. Not the hydroelectric, uh, heavy water, deuterium. Now, the Germans have been trying to figure out how to make an atomic bomb, and they were going to try and enrich uh, uranium. And we were doing it ourselves through reactors uh, by using graphite, uh, highly, highly pure, highly refined graphite as a moderator to control the reaction. And the Germans accidentally dismissed graphite as a moderator um, because they hadn't used a pure enough substance. So they were trying to use heavy water as a moderator, which is a lot less viable, let's just say, without going into the details. Okay, we've got Jeb going across now. You notice the frame rate suffering around the station, by the way. The station really is bad for the frame rate. I think it's all the flexible parts. 
But yeah, so the Germans were definitely looking into this heavy water idea for a reactor so that they could make a reactor so that they could breed and basically get enough fissile material for a bomb. And that was basically the wrong route to go down. It's a lot harder to do it that way. It isn't very good um, as a moderator. You really... Graphite is much better. So we went and decided, right, well, you know, if we help the Norwegian resistance, so the Norwegian resistance basically destroyed the facility, and then the Germans were like, oh, we're definitely on the right route. And the Germans continued focusing on that for the rest of the war, despite the fact it was basically the wrong way to go. Even better, after they destroyed the facility, the Germans were like, oh, well, we'll have to get out all the heavy water and uh, continue at another location. And they couldn't get the heavy water out because the Norwegian resistance blew up the ferry uh, that they need to use to get all the heavy water out. So they definitely got the wrong idea there. All right, let's set our deorbit maneuver. Show a landing prediction. I don't trust MapJub anymore with any, you know, important maneuvers for this sort of thing. It's it's much more accurate to do it by eye. But the data MapJub provides is very helpful. So let's bring it in. And also there's, there's this fine line between MapJub is really good up until very close-ish, but you can get it closer. So just let MetJev do a certain amount of it, and then do do the last bit. Do the major bit, and do the last bit. Just let MetJev do the little bit in the middle, where uh, it would just take a little bit of fiddling. I think that's generally the way to do it. Don't trust it, though. It's... <laughs> Especially if you've designed craft in an interesting manner. Right, so. And you see this drop pod is very long. That's because we're going to chuck that bit off. Bang, there it goes. And... We're going in. You can see we're using the lackluster labs parts for this because they look cool. I decided not to dock it just because docking at that station would have been an absolute nightmare on the frame rate. I've been an absolute bitch to try and get in that close. So we decided just to jump, jump out, jump across, EVA it. Oh, right, we're coming in. You can see our landing zone is predicted to be fairly close. We have some very powerful thrusters uh, on the back so we can slow down. And then, of course, we've got our parachutes on the side. So the idea is we open them as late as possible to give them as little, like, warning that they were there. Hopefully they won't see the plasma bloom at our re-entry. That, that would, that would kind of suck. There we go. Slowing down slightly through the air. It takes a remarkably long time to fall. Still falling. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to try and point this craft down. I don't know if we've actually got that much um, lateral velocity. It seems to indicate we have, according to the marker. I doubt we've got it. It doesn't look like we're travelling that fast sideways. I think the marker might be wrong or something. Maybe it's bugged out. It won't be the first time that carefully bugged out. Oh, there we go. Bam. The, ma the marker just jumped. That was very weird. Hmm. Ready. One kilometer from the ground, which isn't one kilometer from the ground, because you know the ground's closer. Probably could have done that slower and lower. Woo! <laughs> Maybe I uh, should have turned the engines off before activating the parachutes. Yeah, I, I completely overestimated, uh, underestimated the power of the thrusters. We could have actually done that much later. But of course it's hard to see the ground when it's dark, so I'm probably earing on the side of caution. And it doesn't look like they've seen us, so let's just get Jeb to sneak around the back. Come on Jeb, let's go. We're a good distance away. We don't want to land right on top of them because they just destroy us, so just land just away from them, and then we'll sneak around the back. So here we go. Let's, uh, We'll pick one of the tanks to nick. we use that. That's a great idea, Jeb. You have all the best ideas. That's why you're a badass. And... Steal it! Oh. Well, let's hope they left the keys in the ignition. Do they have keys in tanks? Probably not. Oh. Come on. Oh. Shh, quiet. Yes, we've got the tank right. No one's noticed. Yes! Oh. Yes! Come on! Yes! 
Get some! Get some! Yeah. Take that! The, uh, the Nat Kerbals are stunned by the turn of events, obviously. We've completely decimated them, so let's just go. Good thing, go. First, just to make sure. Oh, I think we just overloaded our. Uh... Yep, we we just overloaded our Gatling gun. That was. Oh well, we didn't need that. We we we've done our mission. Let's escape. Away! It only took us three episodes to destroy them. I think our ties might be fast. We're moving very weirdly. But anyway. I call that a success. But it didn't matter. The Northern Allied Territories already had the advantage. The Styx Corporation and the Elysian Empire were already on the ropes. Outclassed and outgunned. The advanced technology of the Northern Allied Territories had given them the advantage, and they weren't giving it up. So, a plan was concocted. Werner von Kerman, a genius scientist, came up with the idea of a flux capacitor, able to send one man back in time should it reach a speed of 188 meters per second. This could change the course of the war.